human intelligence is inherently collective. And in that sense, I don't, I don't see much of a boundary, you know, between, uh, between those AI minds that form part of that network uh, and the biological minds uh, that, that, um, that are ours. Blaze, uh, researchers at Meta, uh, one of your competitors, uh, claim to have observed that the company's uh, AI artificial intelligence systems have been improving themselves without human input. Mark Zuckerberg uh, announced that just recently as a, a kind of a seminal event. Uh, in addition, uh, last year, there was a research paper uh, called Girdle Agent, a self-referential agent framework for recursive self-improvement, which suggests how AI could self-improve via formal proof. So those are two different approaches to the same thing. Um, have you seen any of that at Google and how do you analyze the, uh, th these two kinds of um, indications for the future? So first of all, a lot of the conversation about recursive self-improvement uh, unfortunately, uh, in my opinion, is bound up in in these ideas about hard takeoffs of AI, in which you know it 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 sort of goes off on its own and uh, and and begins to improve itself in a faster and at a faster and faster rate, yeah. and you know and and sort of uh, you know an, ex an exponential explosion, right? And there's an explosion that leaves humans behind, and so on. Um, I I think I think that well, first of all, the the claims um, from uh, from Mark and from others about systems doing this are um, are overblown, in my opinion, relative to what you know to what is actually happening, and also are trivially true and have been true for quite some time. In the sense that um, you know, one of the things that that these models are are best at actually is writing code and working working through uh, problems in you know in Python and in machine learning and so on. This is this is why, for instance, um, uh, Sakana's AI scientist, you know, was, uh, you know, their, their sort of first target for paper writing uh, was papers about machine learning and AI. And, and yeah. uh, you know, we've done similar things at, at Google and, and, and so have others. Um, you know, the, the idea that, that AI is now involved in making AI is almost trivially true and has been for quite some time. You know, a lot of lines of code are, are AI written nowadays at all of the big uh, tech companies, uh, which is... Uh, you know, I mean, I can tell you as, as somebody who, you know, who writes code and who engineers uh, feels kind of amazing. Uh, you know, they're, they're not yet at the point where, where you can really just set them loose on a problem and, and walk away and expect that, uh, you know, that, that they, they won't go off the rails at some point. But when you, when you co-write, when you co-engineer with these models, it really feels like having a, a rocket pack on. It's kind of amazing. Uh -huh. um, so, of course, they're, they're, they're you know, self-improving in that sense. But, uh, but it's, it's much more of a... Um, uh, I would say a feedback network, if you like, uh, that involves uh, people and engineers, the models, uh, you know, and various kinds of, of of experiments and 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 engineering processes, right? Than than it is. It's, you know, it's not like you know we we go home at night and come back and and you know the the takeoff has occurred. That's that's not how these things are working at all. Yeah. Still, though, what you've said is of course true, and I think everybody knows that. And I would think that. Researchers at Meta know that too, uh, but yet they felt compelled to make this statement that, that at least in the public expression of it, was a step function difference. Um, Every everybody, I think, uh, you know, and, and I, I, I don't want to cast aspersions on 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 on, on Mark in particular. Um, a lot of AI companies, you know, because this the space is so. Um, yep. heated now and, and so much attention is on this and the companies are racing to try and, and uh, you know, and, and say, you know, we achieved this milestone first. The truth is, you know, there's a, you know, we're, we're all kind of in it neck and neck in some sense. And I don't see um, step functions so much as I see just, uh, you know, rapid progress uh, with, uh, with a lot of, um, uh, with, with, I would, I would, I would say a range of steps from small to large that are all, Kind of occurring constantly. If I if I step away from this stuff for a couple of weeks, you know, I, I come back and I have a backlog of really cool papers and results that I have to go through. Yeah. Uh, so if you're describing a gradient, yeah. um, would there be a point in there that that you would see even a little step function? Because 
there are, again, this announcement, uh, it, it could be just for publicity or stock or to promote his Meta's new AI push or whatever. Who, know, who knows what the motivation is? But once again, uh, these are sophisticated people. And so let me just roll it back to you. Could you see in the great in the in the increasing gradient and maybe a steep gradient, a point where there would be some kind of step function? Um, I think that every gradient looks like a step function if you zoom out. <laughs> okay, all right. You know, and and by and by contrast, every step function looks like um, you know a number of sub steps if you zoom in. So okay. uh, I, I'm not sure how to answer the question. Okay. To be honest. okay, good. Well, it's similar to the question in uh, in evolution in terms of uh, punctuated evolution or exactly. gradient of evolution. So uh, one one appreciates that. Um, taking the gradient or the step functions further, uh, the concept of the exponential explosion uh, in AI that would at some point lead to uh, runaway AI, runaway in the sense of it not not necessarily harming or taking over, but run away in the sense of doing things that humans could barely even understand uh, because it was happening so so rapidly. Is that a real thing? You know, one of your uh, co-executives uh, uh, at uh, Google, uh, Ray Kurzweil, who has been on Closer to Truth, um, has promoted that over the years as there will be a point that that ex exponential explosion in AI will occur. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. I, you know, I, I know Ray, and despite having having been ridiculed in some quarters, has actually been right about a lot of stuff over the last uh, twenty years. And I agree with him about uh, his view of human and AI symbiosis, or or the 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 sense in which um, we are we are likely, and I would say already are in some ways merging. Um, I, I do see that as as a as, as the way, not, not just the future with AI, but the way evolution works in general. Um, I also think that when you, when you look at the um, history of technology, there was this period, uh, you know, as some economists have talked about quite a lot between 1870 and 1970, when things moved really quickly, uh, you know, and, and life was transformed in many ways. Um, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien, when he was a kid, you know, the cavalry charge was still a thing. Mm -hmm. and, by the time he died, we had the H bomb, hmm. uh, you know, and, and um, I think we forget how dramatic those transformations were. And in many ways, 1970 to 2020 were a very static period. You know, yes, uh, we had you know computers, the rise of, of, of the internet, um, but but I think that we're now entering a rapid period again. Uh, you know, a little bit more like 1870 to 1970. In other words, we've seen this before, but maybe you know those of us alive now. Are kind of unfamiliar with it because of because of the fact that we 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 went through this you know relatively um, uneventful period. Uh, so you know as for as for this question of of whether um, uh, whether we're about to undergo an intelligence explosion, yeah, yeah, I think it is an intelligence explosion, but it's of a kind that we've seen in evolution many times before uh, among hominins, among bats, among cetaceans, whales, and dolphins. You get these moments. When brain sizes increase dramatically, uh, due to due to the exigencies of cooperation. Yeah, the, the, the difference this time, though, is when you're dealing with biological systems, there are certain constraints on uh, <laughs> size and function. Uh, Jeffrey West on scaling, if you're familiar with that, Very shows nice. how relationships work, and there are certain limitations. I mean, you can't get dinosaurs growing forever. Because the, the 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 volume of their weight the the weight increases by their volume, not their size, and becomes impossible to move, and it's self it's self uh, uh, limiting. Uh, with AI, that doesn't seem to be the case because uh, you can add components, and I mean you have the you know computational li limits of every particle in the universe that some people have calculated ten to the. 130th or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but in, in practicality, uh, AI does not seem to have the kinds of limitations that evolution would have in the biological sense. Well, um, I, I, I think I differ with that. I, so I, I know Jeffrey's work well on, on scaling laws and admire it tremendously. Um, and you know, he's, he's applied those scaling laws not only to animals, but also to the cities. cities, cities. Uh, right. sure, sure. Exactly, to technological systems. Yeah. And, and it's certainly the case that when there is a revolution, 
uh, you know, like the emergence of cities or like the emergence of nervous systems and animals, um, there, there are things about those scaling laws that change. Same thing when you go from uh, prokaryotes to eukaryotes, you get this extra source of energy. So, you know, the, the constraints always have to do with energy, time, okay. and other fundamental physical uh, physical laws. Okay. So with AI, for example, energy could be a, a constraint. That seems like a very mundane thing to constrain it, but it's real because you do, need, you do need the energy. Okay. Um, a, a question I've had in, in thinking about um, AI self-improvement and the possible of exponential equation is, how do you benchmark standards? So if I think about coding, science, math, I can easily see how you can benchmark standards for coding, uh, achieving the same thing with fewer steps or runtime. Those are, are quantitatively easy to determine a standard. But when you go to things like literature, philosophy, the humanities, how do you benchmark quality? Because the AI systems you know, that I've been using really have good quality in those aspects. So what are the ways that you benchmark uh, uh, um, uh, uh, aspects of human knowledge that by their nature are non-quantitative? Uh, I, I think that um, I think that the whole concept of benchmarking as being the, you know, the plus ultra, you know, of how we do AI development is flawed uh, in, in the sense that it is utilitarian. You know, it's about maximizing some quantity. And, um, <clears throat> you know, well, it's certainly the case that we can reinforce, we can say like, that was a good job, you know, you know, yay to that or nay to this and apply reinforcement learning, which is a, you know, key to the, to the way, uh, these well, who, who does that? Who, who is that, is that? Does that require a human intervention? Yes, it does. Oh. And, uh, and this human intervention is really important because, you know, intelligence is about a lot more than playing, a, playing a chess game or something where there's an ELO score, you know, and, and, and there's just a number, even right. coding you know, is, is not just about a score. Uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, a piece of code could just not work, in which case, you know, it's like, a, it's like an organism that, you know, that can't survive or something. Right. But, but there are many, many properties, even of code that are subjective, that are context dependent. Um, so I, I think in, in a lot of ways, you know, scores are a proxy for, um, for relationships, for useful relationships. Uh, in other words, does anybody else care? Uh, is anybody else, you know, uh, uh, seeing that there's value in this and therefore, you know, willing to uh, to cooperate? But you're saying right now that determination has to be made by a human. So that feedback, that uh, that reinforcement is a human uh, um, uh, input to the system. It's always ultimately human feedback. Yes. OK. Uh, will that when you say always? Is that permanent or could it be a point where AI itself could judge its own quality? I think that when you start to think about what uh, a complex society that includes many AIs and many people together looks like, then of course it'll be it'll be feedback in that entire network, not just you know human to AI. But you know th this this gets at another fundamental point here, which is that you know we we tend to um, think about human meaning only an individual you know human being like you or me or our individual brain. Um, human intelligence is not about individual human brains. It's about uh, the entire network. It's about the collective. Uh, individual human brains are not that much more capable than chimpanzee or gorilla brains. Um, you know, and yet this moment came when when we began we began our our intelligence explosion, our takeoff, and that had less to do with the incremental uh, improvement in the size of our individual brains than with the fact that we were able to cooperate. So human intelligence is inherently collective, and in that sense. I don't, I don't see much of a boundary, you know, between, uh, between those AI minds that form part of that network, uh, and the biological minds, uh, that, that, um, that are ours. This is why, you know, when we talk about, well, who's intelligence, you know, or who's the author or who made this thing, I, I think those questions already are becoming harder and harder to answer. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us, and thanks for watching.